Well, surprise, surprise, today happens to be Commonwealth Day over in the UK, and King Charles III gave a speech about the Commonwealth. Interesting that this would happen after I've been talking about Israel and Palestine coming together under his Commonwealth. And interesting in the speech, which I'll show you, it's very interesting to note in the speech that he says that other countries are going to be joining the Commonwealth in the future. And the Commonwealth's growth with new members continuing to join our family of nations straight clearly that whilst we may not all have a shared history, we have common ambitions for a better future. To come together in unity. And it's interesting that he mentioned, of course, the climate change and all of that. And after I talked about the black horse and discovering through the power of the Holy Spirit that this is the enforcement of the laws with the black horse, and the king is the white horse rider who's given a crown. Um, it's a special gift when he comes to Jerusalem. And so <laughs> the thing that's going on right now in Gaza with Joe Biden saying he's going to build this big platform to bring the goods through the corridor, ironically, in the same location where they're going to increase the trade of Israel eventually through this Middle East uh, corridor, the one that's gonna go from India up through the UAE and Saudi Arabia, and then it's gonna go up to Italy, Cyprus, Greece, and France, and it's gonna go through the Mediterranean Sea with the fiber optic cable and the gas pipelines and all of this trade. Israel's going to become wealthy through this. The Scarlet Harlot, Mystery Babylon the Great um, will be living in luxury and then the true King of Kings is going to come and put an end to all of this. So when the King mentioned these other countries joining the Commonwealth, I have no doubt in my mind now that this is the plan and it's coming about very, very soon. And remember, I recently pointed out in one of my videos that the king here is mentioning that the Commonwealth is a third of the world. And we see all of those judgments on a third part of the sea and everything I showed you in that video in Revelation, that everything was a third, a third judgment, a third judgment. and. Isn't that ironic that it's this commonwealth that is a third? And the king mentions it in this speech. That's what I was gonna say. So I just wanted to bring this to your attention that today is Commonwealth Day. And I was also going to point out too that the other day when they talked about the red heifer ceremony coming about and um, another watchman showed the uh, ramp that they built and all of that. Well, what he didn't show was that on the ramp, there was a priest in white garments. So this covenant with many is coming soon. And I'm gonna be talking about some more things about not being deceived by signs, miracles, and wonders that come along with this king rising to power. So I believe that this eclipse that's happening with all the signs and wonders and all of the coincidences of you know going through all these Ninevehs and all of this this is all propelling you to associate the red heifer ceremony with these signs miracles and wonders for example when I 
several months back revealed about the Tav, the ancient Hebrew letter that stands for covenant, going over the very place in Texas where the red heifers came from. This to me is a sign of the so-called covenant with many. It's a warning that that is the blood covenant and the Antichrist rising, which is a false messiah, you know, uh, it's a king that's the anointed one that will be set upon that throne. He's followed by all kinds of miracle signs and wonders. So don't be taken off in your imaginations by all of these signs and wonders connecting to the red heifer ceremony and all of that because this is the rising of a king who will sit on the throne of Judah that the Sanhedrin appoints and they are the Antichrist spirit and I was thinking to myself about the passage about the Antichrist being the lawless one and the ultra Orthodox have the law so how can they be the Antichrist spirit? It's because Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the law. He fulfills all righteousness, and it's only through his righteousness, not our own, not the rabbi's righteousness, that we have the whole fulfillment of the law in him. So the false Messiah, he is the one who is called the lawless one because he's not upholding the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, he's embracing all these other religions and it's all going to come there, Mystery Babylon into Jerusalem. This is the goal when the Sanhedrin becomes the global judiciary, the supreme court of the world with the king at the helm when they all come under the Commonwealth. So my point with that was to say that, yes, they have the law and they will enforce the laws, which is the black horse. If they put a yoke on the people of Jerusalem, they create the time of Jacob's trouble because Jesus is the living Torah. And because they have rejected the living Torah for themselves, their king will be the lawless one because they will not have the living Torah. They will be having these rabbinical laws imposed upon the world, probably including some of the Islamic laws as well, since they're all coming together up there for this third temple. So I wanted to bring this to your attention. Interesting that I've been talking all about shocking Israel and Palestine joining the Commonwealth and the Kings now saying here on Commonwealth Day that these other nations in the future will be joining the Commonwealth. He didn't specify names, but he said other countries will be joining. So I just think the Holy Spirit was showing me all of that ahead of time and now it's falling into place. And uh, don't be deceived by this eclipse and all of the so-called signs and wonders because the sign of the Aleph and Tav is uh, the Alpha and Omega. When it crosses over, it makes the Aleph and the Tav and it makes uh, the sign of the covenant. <laughs> and at the time of the coming Passover, uh, wow. There's a train. And the coming Passover, when this is supposed to take place, the King of Kings is coming soon. Stand fast. Don't lose your faith in Jesus Christ. He paid the price, the bride's price with his own blood, his living blood, and that's the only thing that can purify us from our sins. And he takes us into the heavenly kingdom to be where he is as his bride. And they're gonna to have to go through this time by rejecting the blood of Jesus. So we know who the King of Kings is and we're on our way. The fifth anniversary of the Commonwealth is a moment to reflect on the remarkable journey that our unique family of free and independent nations has made since 1949. 
Last year, the Bahamas celebrated its 50th anniversary of independence, as Grenada has this year, and Papua New Guinea will next year. Each of these milestones, and many others like them, represent the fulfillment of countless aspirations and the achievement of such remarkable potential. And the Commonwealth's growth with new members continuing to join our family of nations demonstrates clearly that whilst we may not all have a shared history, we have common ambitions for a better future, working together to build resilience and respond to global challenges. The Commonwealth family is strongest when we are connected through friendship. As I've said before, the Commonwealth is like the wiring of a house, and its people, our energy, and our ideas are the current that runs through those wires. Together and individually, we are strengthened by sharing perspectives and experiences, and by offering and borrowing the myriad ways we have each tackled the challenges of our time. This is true both at the level of nations and indeed at the local level. We recognize today that our diversity is our greatest strength. The Commonwealth represents a third of humanity from all regions of the world with all the different experiences, knowledge, and aspirations that this brings. Wherever we live, we are united by the many challenges we face, whether it be climate change, the loss of nature, or the social and economic changes that new technologies are bringing. Our diversity means that these challenges affect us all differently and that we experience their impacts in different ways. Their seriousness, however, is common to each one of us. All of this means that we must work together to understand each other's perspectives, including the inequalities and injustices which still resonate to this day. We must find ways of healing and to support each other to pursue solutions. I cannot say often enough that it is by coming together that we create the best chances to improve our world and the lives of people everywhere. Indeed, over the years, countless people across the Commonwealth have been inspired to form their own Commonwealth associations, from lawyers and accountants to business and trade networks, and many more besides. The work they do is absolutely vital, sharing professional knowledge, experience, and expertise across the continents for the betterment of each one of us. The Commonwealth, above all, retains a particular focus on our young people, who make up two-thirds of the entire Commonwealth population. Whether in Kenya or Malaysia, Vanuatu or Dominica, Malta or Canada, I never cease to be impressed by their creativity, innovative skills, and hard work, often in the most challenging circumstances. Their energy is transforming approaches to development, technology, and preserving and restoring nature, and will, I hope, help to shape and safeguard our common future. Having recently celebrated my own 75th birthday, it warms my heart to reflect on the way the Commonwealth has been a constant throughout my own life, a precious source of strength, inspiration, and pride. In recent weeks, I have been most deeply touched by your wonderfully kind and thoughtful good wishes for my health, and in return, can only continue to serve you to the best of my ability throughout the Commonwealth. My belief in our shared endeavors and in the potential of our people remains as sure and strong as it has ever been. I have no doubt that we will continue to support one another across the Commonwealth as together we continue this vital journey.